Council, Successor Agency, Finance uh, Power Authority, City Clerk. This is the roll call for the Council on Authority. Council Member, Authority Member Johnson. Present. Mann. Present. Smith. Here. Vice Mayor, Vice Chair Christ. Present. Mayor Chair Paris. We have a quorum. I need a motion to excuse. Move to excuse uh, Mayor Paris. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, call the Housing Authority. Roll call for Housing Authority. Housing Authority Member Harvey. Mann. Present. Smith. Here. Vice Chair Christ. Present. Chair Zetto. We have a quorum. Make a motion to uh, excuse uh, Chair Zetto and uh, Authority Member Cassandra Harvey. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Uh, invocation. John Meadows, Christian Life Assembly. Welcome, John. Let's stand for prayer. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can come again before you and ask for your wisdom, your direction, and your blessing. Lord, I pray that you would continue to give our city council and commissions wisdom from your throne as they seek you. Father, we know that you promised to give us the desires of our heart when we put you first. And so let us put you first in everything we do, in our interactions with other, let others. Let your grace shine through us. Bless our city. Protect those who serve us so well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sandra, would you like to do the pledge? I'd be honored. Thank you. Everyone, please join me. Face the flag. Right hand over your heart. And begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Sandy, <laughs> you wanted to speak early? Good evening, everyone. I'm here on behalf of the Lancaster Chamber of Commerce, and really this is just a thank you to the city of Lancaster. Um, I've been in my uh, position as chief operating officer for a little over three months now, and I've uh, experienced nothing but yes, 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 can-do attitude from the city of Lancaster. Um, we had uh, Vern Lawson as our speaker at the chamber last month. Great presentation on economic development, went over very big. We have uh, follow-up speaking requests for Vern now. Um, I really want to talk about the streets of Lancaster and what the staff did. I want to first of all thank our city manager, Mark Bozigian, for, for saying yes, that he would work with the Chamber of Commerce to, to put us in a great position and partner for the, city, for the streets of Lancaster uh, with our beer garden, which is a fundraiser for our uh, work ethic scholarship, which I'm not sure if that mixes too well. But um, also Rhonda Perez, um, working with Parks and Rec, everything that we've been doing with you, your staff has been fantastic. And Kelvin and Luis, uh, Destination Lancaster, starting that partnership for uh, responding to our, our visitors to Lancaster. Um, you guys have been just A number one. I would like to um, present certificates to five particular staff members who really went above and beyond at Streets of Lancaster. That would be Jeff Campbell, Brian Whalen, Ephraim Carrera Jr., Dan Munns, and John Belcher. So thank you very much on behalf of the Lancaster Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Cindy. Okay, we're going to recognize Dan Green for the Neighborhood Courage Award. Dan, could you come down? like me getting up in the morning. Come on. <laughs> no, come on in. Come on in. Okay, Dan Green. He's a custodian at El Dorado Elementary School. While working on the job at El, Dora El Dorado Elementary, Mr. Green observed a 12-year-old girl being approached by a stranger who tried to lure her into the car in an alleged kidnapping. 
Mr. Green observed the young girl's reaction to the stranger, became concerned, and swiftly took action and came to her aid. Although the suspects fled, they left behind evidence which ultimately led to their capture and arrest. That's great. <laughs> Green's quick thinking not only saved the young girl from harm, but ultimately led to the apprehension of the suspect. Would you like to say something? No. This is, this, is, this, is, this is his time, and we cannot be more proud of Mr. Green and to be, for him to be part of the Lancaster School District family, and more importantly, to be a caring member of our community. Thank you very much. I'd like to congratulate Dan for what you do, and on behalf of the Lancaster City Council, we'd like to give you a skybox in the next uh, season, so you and your family and who'd ever like to uh, well, maybe use I it. Do want to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to take a picture, but I'd like the deputies to come down if they would and take a picture with us, so we can all get in here, take a picture. Again, Dan. Let's give him another hand. Okay. The Bridge to Empowerment season. Sue, is Sue here? Yes. Welcome, Sue. Good evening. Thank you so much for having us. I have 95% of the Tapestry Commission here, and we're proud to be at your service. The City of Lancaster's Human Relations Tapestry Commission announced the beginning of the Bridge to Empowerment season this autumn. This was a new theme each month throughout the end of the year, with the goal to bring awareness to each topic by highlighting local organizations of every type, supporting and helping to advertise community activities, festivals, and celebrations, and providing resources and educational materials surrounding each topic. Why? Aren't we all doing enough? The Antelope Valley is so diverse, but it's different than most other places, including the city of Los Angeles. In our town, diversity is within each neighborhood, not clustered like in Los Angeles, the city, where, for instance, people of like cultures tend to reside in the same neighborhoods. Here, our residents and neighborhoods of African American, Latino, Caucasian, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, and every other background on the same street in the same town, working, living, going to school, and socializing together. The season is to help our residents understand each other's beliefs and cultures and highlight ways to continue to embrace our differences. September was Cultural Diversity Month, supporting the High Holy Days with Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. We supported the Heritage Festival, Tamale Festival, and Hispanic, uh, Hispanic Heritage Kickoff event. And we are continuing to October with the American Indian Festival last weekend and the Three Sisters Pow Wow Grassroots Style Gathering October 26th and 27th. We're exhausted. <laughs> Which takes us to October, which is self-esteem and personal security. Domestic Violence Awareness Month is this month. Uh, there will be a press conference for National Domestic Violence Awareness Day on October 16th at 10 a.m. in front of the Michael Antonovich Courthouse. All are invited. Please wear purple. 
It's also National Cyber Security Awareness Month. As part of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, Two Lifestyles is having a ladies symposium October 26th. There's a fee for this, but our own Dr. Arisha Muhammad is speaking. I wouldn't miss it if I were you. Um, National Coming Out Day is October 9th and 10th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Antelope Valley College Library Quad. That's the kickoff for uh, Lesbian and Gay History Month. And this is also National Breast Cancer Awareness Month with the Lacing Up Cancer Walk on October 5th in Tehachapi and Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk October 19th at 7 a.m. at Marie Kerr Park. Finally, but not finally, this is National Bullying Prevention Month, and we celebrate that with the Not In Our Town proclamation signing, the Don't Laugh At Me Bully Awareness Workshop at Barnes & Nobles on Friday, October 18th, and the Youth Empowerment Safer School Summit, which is Saturday, November 2nd. We also celebrate safe routes to school with Walktober. The National Walk to School Day is October 9th. November is Gratitude and Remembrance, and December is Faith and Celebration. We're proud to bring this season to you with your entire community, hoping that everyone in this community understands that they have a place here, and we're glad that they're here. We welcome them to be part of their own civic community. Tonight, as part of the Self-Esteem and Personal Safety uh, Month, and in honor of Nat National Bullying Prevention Month and our Safe Routes to School Master Plan efforts, we're happy to have our partners, the Antelope Valley Union High School District, staff, administrators, and students, the Lancaster School District, staff, administrators, and students, Westside School District, staff, administrators, and, and students, and Eastside School District. If you would each have a representative of the school districts, please come forward to join in a formal proclamation signing. And for those of you who missed it because you can't see through the five of us, our mayor is now present. reading of the proclamation, the City of Lancaster, California, whereas schools make substantial contributions to the future of America and to the development of our young people as responsible and productive citizens, and excellence in education is dependent on safe and distinguished environments, and whereas bullying has escalated to an unacceptable proportion across the globe, interfering with the emotional, social, and academic development of our youth. Whereas, we must safeguard schools for our children and guarantee them an environment that holds promise and security. And whereas, it is critical that we acknowledge and heighten awareness about the negative effects of bullying, which may include the risk of teenage suicide. And whereas, it is the personal responsibility of all citizens of the City of Lancaster to create solutions to prevent bullying, including educators, parents, business owners, civic leaders, and law enforcement personnel. And whereas the City of Lancaster wishes to continue the coalition of anti-bullying schools, this coalition will include the school districts of Antelope Valley Union High Schools, Eastside Union, Lancaster, and Westside Union. Now, therefore, in recognition of National Bullying Prevention Month, be it declared that the community of Lancaster, California, will designate 
the month of October 2013 to anti-bullying activities and stand together as a community united with unwavering resolve that when it comes to bullying, we stand by this pledge and proclaim, not in our town. The City of Lancaster is also happy to proclaim Walktober, which is the day and the month in which we recognize the fitness requirements and the safety requirements to have our children walk to school. Whereas a lack of physical activity plays a leading role in rising rates of obesity, diabetes, and other health problems among children, and being able to walk or bicycle to school offers an opportunity to build activity into daily routine, and whereas an important role for parents and caregivers is to teach children about pedestrian safety and become aware of the difficulties and dangers that children face on their trip to school each day and the health and environmental risks related to physical inactivity and air pollution, and whereas the Safe Routes to School Master Plan is currently in progress to improve routes for children to safely walk and bicycle in our communities, and whereas driving students to school by private vehicle contributes to traffic, contributes to traffic congestion and air pollution, children, parents, and community leaders around the world are joining together to walk to school and evaluate walking and bicycling conditions in their communities. Now therefore be it resolved on behalf of Lancaster City Council in recognition of National Walk to School Month, I do hereby proclaim the month of October, Walktober. And at this point, we'll have a photo op and invite all school district representatives, teachers, parents, and students to join for a photo opportunity. So pull out those iPhones and the other ones, too. and the adults in back. Get the adults in the back. And the children can go up front. Alright. Yeah, we're going to get the children up front. Get the children up front.
Alright, nice big smile. One, two, three. Now stay there, stay there. We got a lot of cameras. Just stay there. One more. Big smile. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Okay. okay, now there's a couple just quickly of any family and friends would take a shot while they're there. Let's go ahead and do it. Go ahead and take a shot. the streets of Lancaster and look. which means you got to do it because I wasn't there well we're gonna have to, if you want to stay seated we're gonna have a video for a moment here. Anybody crack? Anybody roll? <laughs> sadly yes um, the streets of Lancaster was an awesome time this year so what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you a video and there's a test at the end we're gonna see who can pick out what may be the newest vehicle in the city of Lancaster fleet. Okay, we'll see who's going to get that first. And then after the video, we're going to award a couple of trophies to the uh, Guns and Hoses winner and to the Boulevard champ. Is the Boulevard champ here? Oh, there you are. Okay, so first off, with no further ado, we're going to start the video.
one of our interns do that? That was Michael and Luke did that. Stand up, you guys. That is truly remarkable. That, that is professional quality stuff. I just, wow. I'm, I'm just really impressed. Thank you. That's what we just said today, too. We were going to try to fool you and say Jason and I did it, but you wouldn't believe that. That's accurate. <laughs> Okay, if we can have uh, Monty Buckaloo come down here, please. And if you want to bring your family, that's fine, too. <laughs> okay, first off, at this year's race, there were over 100 VIPs and sponsors. And to get in, it's not just who you know, it's how much you contribute to the community. Not just in money, but what you contribute. The <laughs> um, representing Carpeteria, correct? is one of our gold sponsors. The reason we can put events on like this is because of the sponsors and community. And Carpeteria stepped up. So please give Carpeteria a big hand. <laughs> Mr. Buckaloo went through two races, I think, plus practices, and he came out on top over 100 VIP racers. And everyone got better this year. I mean, I know I've done it for three years. I got better. Everyone got better. And he was by far the best in the field. So we congratulate you, and we have a trophy for you. So if you guys, if you want to take some pictures, family, come on up and we'll stay up here till you're ready. This was quite the race, guns and hoses. We can have our deputies come down. We guns won. <laughs> <laughs> and what was your hint? I don't see any firemen. No. We don't have any firemen, do we? That must have been humiliating for them. <laughs> <laughs> The winner of the Guns and Hoses race was Deputy Justin Fisk. And I think if you had been at the race, you saw some strategy. It was clear from the outset that the Sheriff's Department was a lot better than the Fire Department. <clears throat> so the Fire Department had one of two choices, be good sports and race, or decide they were going to pick on one guy who they were going to crash and make crash. And that was Lieutenant Crager. <laughs> <laughs> He was hit numerous times. He was a little hot when he came off the track, but then they celebrated. So, uh, Mayor, I don't know if you or the captain would like to say any words. No, and congratulations to the team. I mean, they uh, came out and did some practices, and uh, it's unfortunate that the fire department couldn't be here to see this today. <laughs> is there a fire out there? There really isn't, is there? This is sad. <laughs> but, okay. Congratulations. You know, it looks like it's a bunch of toys out there, but it is really, really difficult. Uh, I mean, it's it's harder than driving a car, believe me. It's, uh, I'm really glad you won. Thank you. Oh, okay.
Okay, City Manager, anything, any items to be removed? Uh, no, sir. Thank you. Any speaker cards on the council minutes? None. Do we have a motion and a second to adopt? Motion to approve M1. I second. Let's vote. And it's unanimous with one abstention. Anything to remove from the consent calendar? No, sir. No speaker cards. Okay. Uh, move to approve the consent calendar as currently comprised. Is there a second? I'll second that. Let's vote. It's unanimous. New business. We'll hear staff report from Parks and Rec, Rhonda Perez. Mike Rose is going to cover this one for me tonight, please. Are you sick? No. Oh, well, yeah, she shouldn't be here. She is sick and should not be here. Okay. Mr. Mayor, Council, each year the City of Lancaster applies for a Lockheed Martin grant to help support our Celebrate American America on the Boulevard event. This year we were awarded $8,000, which went to exhibitions, entertainment, etc. at our event this year. Um, this report recommends an appropriation of that $8,000 um, for this year and to increase revenue account 106-3232-100 by the same amount, $8,000. That's it. Thank you. Any speaker cards? None. Is there a motion? Motion approve NB1. I second. Let's vote. It's unanimous. NB2. Uh, Brenda Kamla. Kamlasi. I'll practice that, okay? Sorry, Brenda. Not a problem. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members. Um, I have the honor of letting you know about another grant that we received, $10,000 from the Kaiser Foundation Community Grant Project. It's for Boulevard Project Get Fit Healthy Active Lifestyles. So we're going to be doing several things through the Parks Department. And thank you to Angela Riley and Melissa Ferreira for um, helping with this grant and the grant application and being very successful at it. Um, the things that we'll be doing on the boulevard is expanding the farmer's market on Thursday nights with educational workshops and cooking demonstrations that are healthy um, to help to reduce obesity. And then we'll also have boulevard-based fitness programs, including distance markers that will be throughout the street and around the surrounding park and the surrounding streets so that you know how far you've walked and that's open to everybody and that'll be a great addition to the boulevard and the downtown. Um, we'll also, this grant will allow us to increase the number of instructors that lead the Fit Kids program that's already in existence and that's for 17 and under. So we're very excited about that. And then anybody who participates in those programs will get a $3 voucher to use at the farmer's market at the vendors that are participating. And they've already reached out to several of the vendors, and they're very receptive, so we're looking forward to that. We also are using, working with AVPH for working with the boulevard businesses, the restaurants, to identify what the healthy options are in each restaurant. And then we're working on a program to have little stickers that would be identifying all those businesses that help have healthy options. In addition to that, we will have surveys that are given out to the patrons at the farmers market so that we can find out how how they feel about the activities that are present in the downtown area for health. And then we'll get feedback and we'll hopefully be able to expand further and get more grants that way, hopefully. In addition, we are working with Antelope Valley Partners for Health to expand those options. They're very anxious to continue being our partners for this. So we, Angela and I, are actually going to be meeting tomorrow. I wish we could have brought more information tonight to you, but um, tomorrow we'll be talking about many different options of promoting healthy activities in the downtown area and around to bring people down here walking, riding, and then also to choose the right healthy options at, at restaurants and at the farmer's market. 
So I'd also like to, I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you so much to Amy Weiss. She's our Kaiser Senior Community Benefit Health Specialist for the area. She keeps bringing these opportunities to our attention and helping us through the process. And she's just phenomenal in helping us. So she's been with us with the Heal Zone grant, which we've brought to you a couple of times um, that is also in conjunction with this project and with the school districts to bring healthy options, um, some gardens to like Mariposa, and um, many other things. So we're very thankful to have them as partners as well as AVPH, and thank you again to Parks Department for doing this. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? And those is there a, thank you, Rhonda. Move to approve NB2. A second. Hey, Brenda, I'm sorry. Rhonda, Brenda, I'm, I'm old, sorry. Let's vote. It's unanimous. It's really easy to vote to take people's money. I just, you know. Mark, speaking of taking people's money, uh, it was brought to my attention that um, the county, the county of Los Angeles has for senior citizens vouchers for uh, the farmer's market. Do we know anything about that? Uh, yeah, we work with a couple of people on that. I'll have to get you a better report on that. And I know we looked at that once. There was an impediment to it, and I'm just not coming to me now, but we can get that back to you in the information. Okay, thank We're you. trying to still access that. Can we work on that? Yeah, we are working on it. We're trying to access it. I'll get you a better report. Okay, thank you. Wow, today is a great meeting. It's all pluses. Now we get the uh, Youth Commission, right? Come on up. And Rhonda, don't you breathe on those kids. <laughs> Mayor Paris and Council Members, it's my privilege to introduce Marissa Vale Melissa Varela, I'm sorry. Um, she actually coordinates our youth commission. It began in 1992, and it's a way for our local youth to get involved in the in city government, have a voice, sh share their concerns with us from their perspective, and we're really, really proud of this program. So tonight, Melissa will introduce each of them to you for nomination and appointment. Okay, thank you very much for having us here tonight. Um, as Rhonda mentioned, this is our 21st year of doing the Lancaster Youth Commission, and tonight I have seven individuals who are bright, energetic, and enthusiastic about participating in our Youth Commission <coughs> this year. Okay. People are looking at me like I'm supposed to do something. What? Huh? NB3. Mayor Paris, oh. would you join us for their nomination and appointment? Sure. Yeah, I'll approve. Or, okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry. We need a motion I'll move, and approval. Nominate. All right. I'll uh, I'll nominate the. Uh, I, I don't have to go through all their names, right? The the candidates. And I need a motion to appoint and a second. So moved. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ron, go ahead and vote. Oh, I thought we said aye. It's unanimous. We're going to have to start having rehearsals, guys. <laughs> okay.
to the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of California, the Constitution of the State of California, take this obligation freely without any mental reservation, take this obligation freely without mental or purpose of evasion, or a purpose of evasion, you will faithfully discharge the duties, and you will faithfully discharge the upon which you are about to enter. Upon which you are about to enter. We hope to um, provide children with more literature to broaden their knowledge, and another idea is to provide the homeless with jackets for the um, winter. Really? Yes. Uh, um, many people have jackets they don't use anymore. They're either worn out, they don't fit. So if there's a way, we can accumulate all those in one general area and then distribute them. <laughs> no, because I'll travel, you know, and I'm from Lancaster. It's warm. It's hot. I don't bring my coat. I get there. It's five degrees. I gotta go buy a coat.
Peanuts? Thank you for sharing. <laughs> that was my dinner. <laughs> okay. No action on the financing authority, no action on the housing authority, no action on the power authority, no action on the successor agency. City manager, any announcements? Uh, yes, I do. We've had a very busy couple of weeks, so we're going to show you three about minute and a half videos each on three of the events we've had. Okay. I think they'll tell the story the best, so I'll talk about the first one, then we'll show it, and then we'll briefly do the second one while we're queuing it up. But before I do that, I want to remind folks that we do have the Field of Drafts coming up November 9th. Tickets are selling out very quickly, so if you don't get them in the next couple of weeks, you're unlikely to have them. Um, also, uh, Mayor and Council Members, there is unlikely to be a video on this event, um, so you just have I'm glad to, to hear that. Yes. Are they selling tickets at the local AA meetings? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they didn't announce it when I was there. I, was just <laughs> I don't think so. We've, we've, tried, we've tried to do all the restaurants. We're really doing a beer fest, right? Yes, we are. Proudly and gladly. Healthy and moderation. Thank you, Mr. Mann. Safe. I've never liked that voting thing, you know. <laughs> um, the first video you're going to see is regarding the job fair that we had in September. Um, I thank the support of Mayor Paris and the council for putting this on because a lot of cities would have just sat back. And I think from seeing this, you'll see that um, we can be very, very proud of our city and what our staff and our council have done to help people uh, connect with other em employers that have jobs. So the first one, please roll. This is about a community coming together. This is about people offering jobs. This is about people looking for jobs. And we have a great community, both inclusive of Palmdale, Lancaster, the entire community. And when you can come together like this and support the community and give and get jobs, it's a great thing. We believe in talking with people. We believe in communicating with people. BYD is a great example of that. Morton Manufacturing is a great example of that. When we talk to people, they get excited about coming to Lancaster, coming to the Antelope Valley, and that's what we're all about. I think it's getting better. I think the economy is getting better. I think that we're going to make it work. We have a lot of things in the fire. We can't announce them right now, but we have a lot of things in the fire, and unemployment is going down. to thank Roxy Karamanian of our staff who headed this up and we're going to honor her and some of our other private sector partners at a future council meeting. Um, and that's the next one I'm going to, if you can stop it for one second. The next one is Bark at the Park. And um, this is really a great event every year. And everyone who comes, I think Vern Lawson came for one of the first times this year. He said he was amazed at how nice people are when they're with their pets and dogs and how friendly they are towards you. And uh, just always a great event. And for anyone that doesn't go, you're really missing one of the city's best events. Thank <laughs> you. 
just a real fun time and we appreciate everyone that came and the last one this is something unique for us this year and I thank Jason and Rhonda and our Parks Department and Public Works Department for um, putting on football games at the stadium and the city of Lancaster was able to host the annual Battle of the Mall between Palmdale High School and Highland High School Vice Mayor Christ was there being an old Palmdale High School alumni and um, I'd really like to say thank you to Jeff Williams, who is the athletic director and coach of Palmdale High School. Very classy guy, nothing but praise, worked with the city, and was really appreciative because Palmdale High School does not have a home field this year. And this gives them the opportunity to play home games. It was a lot of fun, and it was uh, encouraged the community to come out. We have them, I think, uh, for the next five Fridays. So with that, we'll see some football highlights. Tonight's our first Golden League game with the high schools for football out here at the stadium. So six months of the year we use this for baseball, and the other six months now we're trying to find something else to showcase the stadium off. So in the next five weeks we're going to have football games here with the Golden League, and this is our first one, so we're very excited about it. you want to say anything about that? I think that uh, <clears throat> the community sometimes, they don't believe we work together as an entire community, but I think this shows that when we open our arms uh, to the city of Palmdale to host their high school, that it's a good thing. I think Parks and Rec did a wonderful job. It's, it's just tremendous when you look at that field uh, to go out and to host it, there's a lot of people there. There was, uh, when I was there, there was probably 1,500 people there. So it was, it was a great event. And thanks for the school district too. So what, for what they did, but Parks and Rec did a great job. Great job. You have great staff. And that concludes my report. Thank you, City Clerk. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the time for you to address the City Council on anything that is not on the agenda. You'll find speaker cards at the back of the Council Chambers. We ask that you fill them out and print as clearly and as concisely as possible so that if necessary, the City Council, City Manager, and City Staff will have your information. 
As much as we appreciate your request to make comments before your three minutes begin, please understand your time begins when your name is announced. Individual speakers are limited to three minutes each. When you approach the podium, you'll see three lights. The green light comes on when your time begins. The yellow light comes on when you have 30 seconds remaining. And the red light comes on when your time is up. We ask that you be considerate of the allotted time to allow other people to have their three minutes as well. Following this procedure will allow for a smooth and timely process for the meeting, and we do appreciate your consideration. State law prohibits the City Council from taking action on items not on the agenda, and your matter will be referred to the City Manager. Thank you. Thank you. Ed Galindo. Your Honor, <clears throat> Council Members, I'm really here to apologize for my wife not being here today. She's in Washington, D.C., doing a little civil disobedience. But she wanted to tell you all, thank you for the trophy for last place. She was in the race. <laughs> she did a lot of work on that. Believe it or not, she worked uh, about three or four times. We went to a private place, and she drove that little car around. And she really wanted to win. Just, she didn't get enough experience, but she did want to thank you all for the last place finish. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Uh, B. Frizz. Thank you, B. And thank you to the city for cleaning that up. That's wonderful. Uh, yeah, we had some folks get together, uh, Rhonda's staff and Robert's staff, and um, we're looking at an overall solution to There's some issues, but there'll be a longer-term solution as well. But staff really got on that and did a great job. Okay. Before we go into executive session, we have one matter I want to discuss. The uh, State Assemblyman and, uh, well, the State Assemblyman and some other county officials who aren't ready to disclose because they haven't got a uh, response back from Palmdale have requested that we meet with Palmdale and try to resolve our differences. The state senator uh, has not contacted me directly. He contacted Mr. Smith and Mr. Mann and Mr. Hoffbauer and Mr. Lackey, was it? Dispenza. Dispenza and requested that meeting. I want to clear that we will not appreciate anybody attempting to engage in self-aggrandizement or political nonsense over a very serious problem that we have with the city of Palmdale. Um, I'm, a, I'm a little surprised that the state senator selected two people that were not running for re-election in Palmdale and one person that was possibly running for re-election in Lancaster, which kind of gives it a taint of political uh, showmanship, which the state senator should recognize we do not appreciate. I think elections should be independent of that, and uh, hopefully he will see the error of his ways. But perhaps not. I imagine this will go on for a while. Um, hopefully, however, the, the uh, county officials will be able to get a meeting between us and Palmdale so that we could uh, hopefully at least start moving in the right direction. Any comments? I, I'd like to comment that we are all accessible to meet, um, and we're willing to meet with Palmdale to discuss whatever they need to uh, meet about and whatever uh, problems that we have, but we're available. You know, Rex, I, I think we clearly need to make sure that the record reflects, too. I think that it must have been several months back where we made at least two to three attempts to extend that olive branch. Um, the very first time there was somewhat of an opening. I know Mark did a lot of hard work. He came up with a list that we felt that from a city standpoint that we could work together on, submitted it. And then we just got it blown away, and since then we haven't gotten I, I, I haven't gotten any kind of response from anybody, either the, the mayor there or the city manager. So, um, you know, I just, I, I think the citizens are misled of both cities sometimes. 
because I think they think somehow that that's propagated uh, the issues on our side, and that's really quite the contrary. So, and I even conveyed that to uh, to the senator. He called me, and I told him I would not be available. I said it's just unfortunate, but um, but I said good luck. I said we've attempted multiple times, and I just don't think uh, I just don't think that they're willing to 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 want to meet and find some kind of middle ground. I agree with you, Councilmember Mann. I, there's been many uh, types of uh, forms that we've tried to communicate with the City of Palmdale, um, and all of us have tried to communicate. Um, I think with anyone coming from any other area to try and, and, and make that happen, we don't really feel that that's going to make the change. We need to let it be known that our door has always been opened. The City of Lancaster has always had an open communication, and uh, we will continue to do so. We're just waiting for the City of Palmdo to come through so we can talk. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Fox did send a letter to both Mr. Ledford and myself uh, requesting that we, we figure out some way to meet and work out these, these difficulties. I appreciate that he followed the appropriate protocol in doing that and did not attempt to engage in any divisiveness in an already divisive situation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fox. And in answer to Mr. Fox's question, we remain ready and willing to talk about anything. I mean, seriously, the Israelis and the Palestinians talk. I mean, at least they talk. Uh, certainly our differences can't be any greater than theirs. Uh, and with that, I'm going to recess and go into closed session to deal with the litigation matters. As listed on the agenda. As list oh yeah, the magic words. As listed on the agenda. We'll be back. We call it back to order, City Attorney. No reportable action. We were in there for an hour. There's yeah. nothing you want to report? <laughs> Not a thing, Mr. Mayor. That being said, uh, the Housing Authority uh, meeting is adjourned until Tuesday, October 22nd, 2013 at 5 o'clock. Okay. The City Council meeting is adjourned until Tuesday, October 22nd, 2013 at 5 p.m in memory of Louis Volta, father of council member Johnson. Louis Volta was a loving father, son, brother, born in Santiago, Chile. He was outgoing and adventurous traits that led him to serve honorably in the Chilean Air Force. Is it Chilean? Mm -hmm. Chilean Air Force. Where he acquired his love of travel and which brought him to the United States, where after his first visit to America, he knew his ultimate goal was to be an American citizen and to live the American dream and to raise his family in the United States of America. After acquiring his American citizenship, Mr. Volta started a small business, proudly settled in Lancaster, Calif Lancaster California with his wife, and raised their son, who is a firefighter fighter paramedic, and daughter, who is an entrepreneur and councilwoman. He believed in continuing education and was very devoted to his church and his family. And he was a friend of both my wife and I, and we will miss him. He truly did embody what this country is all about. Uh, and through that, his children and his grandchildren just soared. And we're seeing that today. And they're all loved by the city. And this was a surprise. We wish it hadn't happened. Carol, my day is done, and I'm coming home.